What is going on Raider Nation? Um, just want to say this is the last video of the year, a state of the Oakland Raiders. I always do this every year and every season. So uh, just a quick heads up. If you are not a Raiders fan, I'm okay if you comment, but please be keep it respectful. I know people like to laugh and troll in, in the comments and all that's fine. This video, do not do it. So just a heads up. You know, keep it respectful. You can say there's things there's bad about them, but just don't say they they suck because they suck. Put in some intellectual words, all right? Just just a heads up. Anyways, the Raiders, as I always do, I kind of look at this team and I look at the season as a whole when I close the book on the year. Uh, this team got better. That's the good thing. They they went seven and nine and increased their record and had four more wins than the year before. So that's a plus. They've been nearly 500 since the Raiders won their first game in 2014. They've only, I think they're, I mean, that's 10, I think they went, it's 10 and 22, I believe, since, uh, sorry, a little bit more than that, but either way, they've, they've gone nearly 500 since that 3-3 uh, three and three finish at the end of 2014. So the, uh, the Raiders, there's improvements, they got better, and they proved me wrong in the sense that I said 6 and 10 was the best case scenario. But of course here's the biggest problem is that how the Raiders got there. I know there's that catchphrase for kids, you say it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Well, how they got there was not the way I expected them to. I said also that this, is, this season is all about Derek Carr and his development and growth. And I kind of gave the defense a pass because they're the talent, from top to bottom, the talent is kind of a hole. That's, Reggie did not address the defense as much. So, Derek Carr, he had some good first half plays, and he, he, had some, he had some good games, but he's inconsistent. He's not where I was hoping he would be by the end of the year. He didn't, he didn't progress and get better. Like, I know the stats may say otherwise, but I didn't see it game by game. I just saw a quarterback that throws it up. Oh, he'll throw a prayer against the Titans. He, he got that flag in his favor. Just, I'm seeing throws like that where he looks desperate. He might throw this little check down or this real desperate heave when it's ill-advised. I'm, I'm seeing more of that than I want, and I'm, I'm on the fence with him. Uh, yeah, granted, Derek Carr, I still am not giving up on him. I still believe that he needs a third year, and that's where we find out about him. But the offense as a whole just was very inconsistent. They couldn't run the ball as well. Uh, I think Latavius Murray just couldn't be a bell cow. I don't think those are going to exist anymore in the league, by the way. There's going to be very few of those in the coming years. And then the offensive line's depth got exposed. I think some guys got injured, and suddenly their offensive line wasn't good enough in the second half. So that also didn't help. And believe it or not, Derek Carr also had a number of drops. That's, I was surprised how many drops Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper had at the end of the year. That being said, Amari Cooper has been good. And I'm not going to question that pick. I mean, it's funny when I made my State of the Oakland Raiders video a full year ago, I, I wanted Cooper at first, and then I switched after watching tape. But, no, I'll take it. I know I was wrong, and everyone laughed at me for one or another guy. But I just had them both as 1A and 1B when I reacted. I said I was fine with the pick. So, Cooper, I expect them to get better, and hopefully the drops will decrease. But there was quite a few drops by the receivers that Carr wasn't helped. At the same time, I'm still seeing Carr brain fart when the game is on the line. I'm seeing him make these throws that are near picks or close to be picks. Uh, and, yeah, they got, they got to be able to run the ball, and they couldn't. So, they're, they're, fortunately, because they can't run the ball, they ask for Derek Carr to do everything else. And that's, that's not a good thing. If you're asking him to throw, you're one-dimensional. So, where do we go from here? Well, you know, the whole thing about Musgrave, and I, pe I know people want to fire the guy after a year. Here's the problem with that, and here's the catch, is if you fired Musgrave, and if it happens after this video, I oh will, but if, if you fire him, there comes instability. Derek Carr would have to learn another system completely in an offseason, and that, believe it or not, that takes more time and transition than, it, than you think. Uh, he would have four straight years of a different offensive coordinator or, or offense, because if you count his, rook, his last year at Fresno State, then you count his rookie year last year, and then this past year, this year, and then if they had a new coach, that'd be, be four straight years of a, new, of a different offense. And that, that could screw up a quarterback There's when there's instability. I think, you know, if the Raiders do regress and Musgrave doesn't do any good, then 
Okay, ask him after next year. But this, I don't think it's all on him. It's, I know it's easy, but they just can't run the ball. I don't see execution on the field. That's my problem is if you can't run the ball, then you become one-dimensional and you call all these pass plays that aren't going to work because the opponent knows you're going to pass. That's how it is. So I think that the uh, I think it's better for stability reasons. Now there's two quarterbacks that were former first-round picks, and they didn't have much stability. They had so many different offenses over the years. I don't think they ever had the same offense until until recently. So one of them was Jason Campbell. Y'all know with the Redskins that he was stuck with different coordinators and offenses every year. And of course, with the Raiders, he. He, it took a learning curve in his first year, but he did better in the second half, and he would have been fine if he didn't get hurt. But we all know how that worked out, and unfortunately that injury just kind of hurt him and ended him. The other guy, Alex Smith, the quarterback now of the Chiefs, has – this is his third straight year with the same offense. But when he was with the 49ers, he had a different offense almost every year. It, it was not not until his very end years where he finally had the same coordinator <laughs> – and then he gets traded, and now he's got three straight years of Andy Reid. So stability, it, it, I think people don't realize how much, how important it is. So that's about the offense. There's holes, especially on the offensive line. I would like to fix that. And, of course, we're going to lose probably Donald Penn and others in free agency. So offensive line I'd like to fix. But the tight ends, I like the tight end position. Rivera and, and Clyde Walford look to be good for the long run. <clears throat> So on the defensive side, as I already said, there is reason for optimism next year, but not for the reason I was hoping for with Ken, with uh, the offense being worse, but the defense got better as the season went along. I think they were ranked like 22nd, 21st in overall defense. And when you look at that number, it's better than you think. I mean, they had a very terrible first half, but in the second half, everything got better and improved, and that number obviously went up and increased. So I... You know, the defense with all the bare bones in the secondary that's not named Charles Woodson and all some of the injury question marks on the defensive line, it's looking pretty good. The pieces are there. Obviously, Khalil Mack, we know what he can do. Uh, but even Ben Heaney proved to be all right. I, I thought he was going to be a special teamer, and he's proven to be all right for what, he's, what he was asked to do. I think still he's going to get exposed somewhere, but he did all right given the circumstances. But there's holes. Obviously, that's secondary, and that DJ Hayden pick is a bust, and unfortunately, we need to see better cornerbacks. But they did a good job given the talent they were given in the sec secondary because that was the biggest flaw that I, we all knew was coming into the year, and it, it got better. Uh, so I give credit to Jack Del Rio, who runs the defense primarily, and then Ken Norton Jr. does a few things on the side. Maybe Rod Woodson, the DB coach, he was our coach when, in 2011 when the secondary sucks, but maybe he's gotten wiser after four years. <laughs> I mean, great player, no questions about it, but great players don't always turn into great coaches. Uh, but maybe he's gotten wiser after some years of learning. So the Raiders got to 7-9 and nine and beat my best-case scenario, but it was not at the point where I was hoping it would be. It's just because the defense is why they got there not because Derek Carr dominated from week one all the way to week 17. I just saw a few, a good first half and a handful of good games, but I saw an inconsistent quarterback. Uh, I, need, I need to see more out of Derek Carr. And I obviously I want to see him next year, and hopefully he improves because year three is judgment year. But I'm on the fence with him as a whole. Uh, you know, the good thing, the biggest positive is that the Raiders are no longer the laughing stock of the NFL. I think we can finally take that off, take that shut off. There's way other teams that are a joke. I mean, the Raiders are drafting outside the top ten for the first time since Namdi Asamoah, I believe. It's been a long time. Of course, I know they went 8-8 eight and eight a couple of years, but they didn't have a first-round pick. Both of those years they traded it. So this is the first time they draft, they start a draft outside the top ten. I know you're going to say DJ Hayden, but that's because they traded down. So... <laughs> So that, that's a good sign. I know people say, oh, you ruined your draft position, but I, I don't want to take it. I'm sorry. It's just, it's actually more embarrassing when you lose a lot of games. Look at the Cleveland Browns. I mean, that team, Hugh Jackson's got a big up, uphill battle with that team, and who knows what they're going to do, but that organization has not had any stability, and 
they've been they can't find a quarterback. They haven't found anything, and I think they're drafting second overall or third overall, if I'm not mistaken. So you can always be them. You can always be the way the Titans are, and their owners are trying to figure out what they're doing. But as they're drafting first overall, um, I'm just happy we're not one of those guys anymore. The Raiders are just mediocre. Now, of course, mediocrity will get annoying. Right now, it sounds good because they went from three and thirteen to seven and nine. But when you go seven and nine or eight and eight year in and year out, it gets very annoying. It gets frustrating because you're so close yet you're so far. You don't know what to do with this team. I mean, ask the Dallas Cowboys before their division season, uh, where Demarco Murray was healthy. I mean, they went eight and eight for three consecutive years. You thought Jason Garrett would have been given the axe by then, but they still stuck with him, and they were rewarded when they had a good offensive line, and they were able to build up from that. Uh, but going 8-8 eight and eight and being mediocre for three or four straight years gets annoying, and even I would be asking for Del Rio's head if that keeps going on because uh, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to tamper with the team when you're 8-8. Eight and eight. When you're terrible and you suck, you can just blow it up. You can start all over again. That's not too... It's easy to know what you have to do. But when you're 8-8 eight and eight consistently, you don't know what to tinker with because you've seen some signs that they look good and you've seen signs where they don't look good. You don't know what to do. You, hope, you have to hope Derek Carr, in this case, becomes a great franchise quarterback, and I haven't seen the franchise quarterback label of him yet on tape. Oh, stats, you can point stats at me all you want, but when I watch the tape, I'm like, eh, the defense has won more of the games than Derek Carr has. Sorry, but how it is. So that being said, with all the things that have happened, I'm relieved to not be the laughing stock. And there's other teams with a bigger, <laughs> bigger problem. You can look at the one that's owned by Jed York. Look at those guys. No, those guys. Who knows what they want to do? But there's an ego problem there. Anyways, uh, lastly, despite all the things that I've said about Derek Carr and I've been skeptical of him, I do like Derek Carr the person. He's part of Play For Him, which I can get, put in the link below. Uh, so Play For Him, good organization. Uh, there's other writers who are a part of it, too. Uh, for, uh, Rod Streeter, who probably is going to get cut. He, he was speak, speaking part of it. Former Raiders guy, Miles Burris, is in there. Uh, even, I believe, Rod Woodson was part of this uh, video series. And, and then also o Ola Wale, uh, Jimmy Z. Ola Wale, who earned a contract extension. Good for him. Uh, all those guys are part of play for him, so I'll just show you a little snippet. Uh, so Derek Carr is one of the main features, and I, this is why I can root for him as a person. I'm, I want to see him do well. Just as a quarterback, I've been up in the air and on the fence with him, but you can see this little clip. You were created by a loving God with a purpose. And he has a wonderful plan for your life. Man is sinful. But because of our sin, we're separated from God. We're separated from God. And Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins so you can be forgiven. And have a right relationship with God. But only through Jesus Christ can you be saved. It's a gift, but you need to make the decision. You need to make a decision to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. And we must individually receive Him. I pray and hope that you'll make the decision, man, just to follow Him. Because I promise it's life-changing and it's unlike anything you'll ever experience. So anyways, uh, that's about it on the season. Well, I'm going to close the book on 2015 and just look for next year and all. Uh, I'm not going to go into full hibernation uh, like I usually do. I will talk about the pretty much the draft classes that I've been, since I've been on YouTube, I'll kind of go back and grade them. I mean, you can't really grade a draft class after one or two years, but when it's three or four years through, you can give a letter grade to most of these draft picks. So. I'm going to start with 2009 because that was my first time here on YouTube and that's the first time I spoke about the Raiders and it was the 2009 draft. So I will do that in the offseason after the Super Bowl. Uh, of course, I will talk about the Super Bowl when the time comes. So uh, you all want to get a Super Bowl talk and stuff, I, I will always talk about it no matter what. So you know, whoever's in there, good luck to your team and all that. I can't, can't really comment one way or another on who's left in the playoffs. but. Super Bowl, I, I do want to discuss when those two teams are there. So, see you guys later. Go Raiders, and I will be continue to make my series of draft grading in the off season. See you guys later.